rooms of the, of the areas we worked and cash out for what we had invested in those candles. So it was not uncommon for me to take 60 candles to work one day and 20 minutes later, 20 minutes later, really 20 minutes, those 60 candles are gone and there's an envelope sitting on there with cash in it. There came a point where we literally sat down one night and said, we need to decide what we're doing because I was teaching during the day, coaching after school, we were newlyweds without children and we were making candles until midnight or later every night. And we just realized that, okay, this business thing could be a good business, but do we want to take the chance? I had a stable job as a teacher and we realized that if there's ever a time, this is it. So I quit my job as teacher. All the teachers looked at me and thought, this is the craziest thing I've ever heard. You're leaving a secure job to make candles. That's the oddest thing. So, but we did it and we knew that, I guess, I guess we just have that entrepreneurial spirit. You know, you just, you take chances. But we honestly, we haven't turned back since. That was our first glimpse of what it would cost us to make candles. There's Eric. Doesn't he look young? Oh my gosh. <laughs> that was our house, that's where we, he had a so lot of hair. All the he had hair then. Yes, he did. Working with Eric has been incredible. It's great. Um, we continue to grow and build the business all the time. And um, just getting to do that with him and do that in life with him has been awesome. It does feel like we're just going to be on this journey forever. And it's amazing because it just continues to evolve. I just feel how, us as a team, how we can propel forward even faster. Having Janet along on this ride, it feels amazing. You know, we're still trying to make the best product we can, the best candle we can. And we found out about this product called Soy Wax. And what is Soy Wax? Well, it makes sense. It's 100% renewable. It's, it's a product of American agriculture. It's, it's a cleaner burning alternative to candles, but Soy Wax has none of the carcinogens of a paraffin wax. So the overall impact, it just keeps going on and on and on. And we were committed to soy and all natural, and we realized that that's just where we want to be. We live in Iowa. We are surrounded by corn and soybean fields, as far as the eye can see. The richest soil in the world is under our feet. And we have access to the highest quality soybeans anywhere. So let's, let's pursue this. I'm Al Witt and uh, I'm a farmer here in Osage, Iowa, and uh, we farm about a thousand acres of soybeans and a thousand acres of corn. <laughs> Typical Iowa farming is, is corn and soybeans, and uh, uh, many people you know, use the corn and soybeans for feed. That's probably the main purpose. Um, but there's so many other you know, uses um, you know, that we have, whether it's pharmaceuticals, uh, whether it's you know, for soy candles and things like that. Uh, the more products we can have to utilize our products, the better it is for me as a, as a producer. So, exciting. Eric and I go back, um, back to high school days. You never find another higher moral, high ethic person than, than Eric and his family. And it took, I took the agriculture road and, and he took a different road and it's really neat, you know, 25 years later that we're back into agriculture together. And what a great story. When consumers buy a soy candle, if they could just look at that story and see where that soy candle came from. You know, the soy wax was created from a soybean. That soybean was created by a farmer on his tractor driving that field, harvesting those beans, which he earlier in the year planted into the soil and maintained you know, through the summer and took, took care of. It's a, it's a great story. I mean, it's really, it, it is the American dream at work. It really is, where everyone is working together and the process is good for everyone. This is not about Eric Sparrow or Janet Sparrow or 
or milk house candles even, as much as it's about the livelihoods that we're contributing to. We're building something great. We're building something that makes a difference in people's lives. We truly believe that. That is so satisfying to know that we're bringing people a place that they can love to work. We have the greatest team in the world here. As we brought people in, we've really focused on strength. So the reality is when we hire someone, we hire for attitude. The goal is that a person comes to work feeling energy. They want to be here. They want to be part of this. The most rewarding part is just enjoying to come to work every day. I've never worked in an environment where I truly love coming to work every day. My father was a photographer. What a great opportunity for us to utilize his imagery in our business. My mother as an award-winning chef and cook. What a great opportunity to take her areas of expertise and turn them into the candle side because the sense of smell and the sense of taste are so closely related. This is a um, heirloom tomato bread that I made in the loaf crock. And right now the heirloom tomatoes in the garden are just exploding. So it seemed like a natural thing to put together. But sometimes it's nice to have a food fragrance in your kitchen that isn't overwhelmingly sweet. And this is one of my favorites. It's just very botanical, but still has that essence of food. Well, my name is Ryan Horgan, and uh, I'm the Director of Business Development for Milk House. And we're obviously going through a major expansion right now. So that's kind of my first role is to expand Milk House. And there's, there's a huge upswelling of, of customers wanting a good soy candle. And we feel like we're in a position to do that now with this equipment, which can produce way more than we ever dreamed of in the past um, and, and still do the still keep up the quality that Milk House has always brought to the table. It's an awesome situation to be in an opportunity where we can create jobs that's the other side of this spectrum. Not only are we getting product that's healthier into people's homes, but we're also creating the jobs that used to be here. This plant used to employ over 100 people and was shut down by a big conglomerate and, and so we get that great feeling of being able to bring those back to a small community. And that's the neatest part about this. We all get to raise our families in these small Midwest towns that we love and, uh, and be able to do something on a large scale like this. So it's really neat to be part of the Osage community. Uh, I grew up here, I graduated from Osage. Um, but to integrate that with the Decora Iowa community, to integrate that with the New Hampton Iowa community and see the differences in those communities and the things that each one of those communities uh, brings the table as far as how they handle business in those towns and how, how the economic development systems work. We love small town, we love the work ethic, we love the community minded people and the pride that we see in these small towns, the local community schools. We just love small town, rural life, we love it. We have to make sure that the world we leave behind is gonna be a safe world for our kids and for their kids and for generations to come. Taking soybeans from our own neighborhoods and helping distribute that product throughout the world, it's a, it's a great feeling. Having a family is really a big, a big reason we ended up taking this leap and jumping into the small business because we knew that if we wanted to be the type of parents that we knew we wanted to be, we would love to have the flexibility of being able to control our own schedules. We're right now, we're building a tree house at home with the kids. It's, it is awesome, it is, it is such a great journey. But it really is, it's, a, it's about the journey of building this with them and hearing their input through that process and making modifications on the fly with our kids who have every bit of input. From a creativity standpoint, it's just awesome because he's figuring it out. And honestly, I guess that's the whole, that's the gist of this whole project. It's just to, you know, use the tools you have, figure this thing out. Yeah, the goal is to build a tree house, but it's not about that destination. It's about the journey of getting to that. We put a lot of focus on this. It symbolizes a whole lot, you know, for business and life and just challenge yourself. You're going to surprise yourself with what you can do, you know. <laughs> Nice, Woo! that was awesome. Business ownership is a journey. You may have high aspirations for what you want your business to be. And you might want to plan ahead, five, 10 years, what you want your business to be. And that's great, you need to have those goals. But taking your business one step at a time, you're gonna follow a path that isn't necessarily straight. Like, but man, the experiences you'll get out of that are gonna be amazing, you know? And that's where we are, we're doing the same thing here. We're just. We're going slow and steady and 
having fun every minute of it. We just felt like, yeah, this is, this is absolutely our calling. This is how we can leave the world a better place.